Hello, Shredder Nation. How are you all tonight? I am delighted to be here with you. You're probably wondering what happened to Jesse James Jamnick. I'm not him. Nope. Jesse is either in between flights or on a plane. I think he's in between flights on the way to spend some time this spring with his daughter. Uh, I think they're being going to be in Vermont at the end of all of his flights today. And so let me introduce myself. Um, I know a lot of you, but some of you might have not been able to uh, see the last episode or two when I was spending time with Jesse. My name is Rod Brooks. A lot of people call me Grandpa Rod. And I have been a part of the Shredder Nation community for just a little over three and a half months. And I am just loving it very, very much. So tonight, I have the real privilege of just being um, a guest host, filling in for Jesse and talking to a very, very special guest. And let me bring her in while I introduce her to you. Welcome, Mimi, Melanie, Mel. How are you? Another, <laughs> doing, another, another shredder with many names. Yes, many, many names. <laughs> well, you, I Mel? just want... You look good tonight. Thank you. You look great. I love that color on you. You're looking Thank awesome. You. Thank hey, you. I just wanted to let people know a little bit. I've read your bio. I've um, talked with you. And I don't know if you know this, but um, when I joined the ER Shred community on a take a look basis, or yeah. it's only 11 days and I can use it as a tool, that was kind of my, my thought was maybe I'll do this occasionally. But I came to a, a call like this and I came to a call like there will be tomorrow night where people were giving some testimonies and talking about what uh, ER Shred has done for them. And I just wanted to tell you, you were one of the very first people that reached out to me outside of that meeting and made a connection. And um, as you know, we've had conversations back and forth on lots of different topics. So I am delighted that it worked out that the night I get to fill in is the night that you were scheduled to be our guest. So and I am as well, Rod, I'll tell you, because we hit it off. We just have a genuine connection. So it is. And that's one of the things that when people say, oh, it's about the culture, um, a lot of times that just goes right over people's heads or they say, yeah, everybody says that. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I I witnessed it and I I'm part of it. And you are a great big part of it. But the culture here might be just considered friendships. It's yeah. support teams, Absolutely. It's, it's allies, it's friends, it's confidants, it's mentors, it's so many things. Yes, it is. So what I read about you was that you um, grew up in, was it Texas? No, I spent 35 years in Texas. Oh, you spent 35 years in Texas. Where were you More born? More than half my life. But I was born on Homestead Air Force Base, which is below Miami, Florida. So we Okay. So now that you're back in Florida, it's a bit of a homecoming. It's a wonderful homecoming for me. I love the beach. I love being close to the beach. There's a constant breeze and and uh, no dusty days like there were in Texas. <laughs> and I read, um, and I think some of the people on the call tonight know this, but I read that you had um, what might have been a little bit less than an, an, a traditional um, upbringing in that you were um, part of a very talented family, I understand. And you want to do you want to share a little bit about that? Uh, sure. So we were a performing family, and that was because my mother and my father both performed in the Jim Canna troupe for the University of Maryland. Um, they both went to college there, and that's where they met. And um, so they did hand balancing, which is basically people stacking on top of people and hanging off the sides and doing genuinely unique things with their bodies. And, and it was a balancing act. And some of it was high hand to hands and some of it was three layers on top, three tiers of people. And um, my favorite picture of my mom and dad is the high hand to hand where he's holding her up over his head and she's in a handstand. So that's where they met. And my father began training us. I know I have a picture of me. He's holding me up when I'm nine months old with two of my feet in his hand. And he's just shaking me so that my legs stiffen, you know, because babies, when, when, when you move them, their legs stiffen up. And so he began to teach us balancing when we were very, very small, before one year old. 
That's awesome. And is that where, because of that performing, is that where some of what we know to be Mimi the Clown came from? My dad is a professional clown. My dad is Bobo the Clown. Really? Yes. Um, well, he, he we got it on the ukulele when he was 14 years old. He took his banjo ukulele all through this, the military service. And and so um, music and performance and acrobatics was part of my upbringing. That's just what we did. And it seems like <laughs> a fair bit of that is still part of your life. We've seen you with some jingles and some a uh, little bit of comedy on our calls occasionally. Do you have anything yeah. planned for us tonight? And I didn't prepare anything for tonight because I figured I'd just wing it. Okay, that's great. Well, we're going to have a great conversation. I want people to find out a few things that they don't already know. Okay. And and you show up. I mean, that's one of the things we love is people who just show up and you're on every call that you can possibly be on. You're in the comments. You're helping people. Um, I have a sense that you're a, a go-giver. Um, a lot of oh, people want to be okay. go-getters, but I know you're a go-giver. I am. Um, yeah. Thank you. So I'd like to take it a little deeper. I've got a little game I thought we could play. Uh, we'll, we'll just play this for 30 to 45 seconds. So okay. there's no wrong answers because no nobody, nobody knows the answer except you. So okay. I'm going to give you a category and you're going to tell me your favorite thing in that category. Oh, boy. Okay. So All here right. we go. What's your there favorite you color? Blue. What's your favorite season? Fall. What's the favorite sport? I, you know, track and field. Track and field. How about song? Um, you are my sunshine. How about a place to vacation? Uh, North Carolina. If you got to have a little treat, not a cheat, what would the treat be? Uh, the treat would be, um, actually, I've been making my own ice cream with the incubated shakes. Oh, I'm going down. What's the favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, vanilla, always. What's your favorite cartoon character? <laughs> Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and what is your favorite smell? Uh, bacon. Bacon. Got to say what? And I, I'll go there next. What's your We're favorite right meat? What's your favorite meat? My favorite meat is steak. Steak. Do you have a favorite of the favorites? Um, not yet. I'm, I just got my butcher box order. So I'm going to decide this time, this time. I'm awesome. Gonna... Awesome. How about favorite animal? I think I might know. Um, it's horses right now. Horses. Flower? I have a heart for kitty cats though, for sure. How about I'm a favorite a flower? Huh? I'm a cat lady. How about a favorite flower? Oh, my favorite flower is the tiny little white one. I don't know what it's called. All right. And then is one it... last one. What is your favorite indulgence? Um, reading, drinking, reading, <laughs> reading, you know, you see where I went. I didn't hear you, but I that's where I went. Been. I haven't had a drink in almost five years. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite book? My favorite book is, um, you know, I'd have to think about that, but I'm reading one now that is called, um, Penguin Bloom. Yeah. It's about the magpie. Oh, awesome. All right. Well, there, there's a few fast facts that people might not have known. And uh, now I know a little bit more about you. Um, so let's go into this area of nutrition, but let's back the truck up. Let's back the truck up to, to when you were younger, when you were um, maybe, maybe it was in grade school or junior high or high school. When did you start? Um, when did you start thinking about nutrition? When did you start it was were you like like I was that that kid? We've heard about kids that were maybe were were athletic, or we've heard about kids that were overweight. Um, we've heard people that were bullied. We've heard what was what was your your youth like? I I was very high energy. Um, they didn't have all the letters that they put behind people's names like ADHD, but I was very high energy, hard to stop. Um, I remember having extreme cravings for salt all of my childhood. In fact, um, I used to put salt in my hand and eat it. Um, when water softeners came out, I used to take rock salt and put it in my pocket and just suck on rock salt or eat bouillon cubes and this <laughs> between the cheek and gum to a bouillon cube. <laughs> so I don't know whether that has anything in reference to um, being the um, ADHD or too hyperactive, but I craved salt till my body hurt sometimes. My mom was, um, she majored in home economics. 
So I learned how to cook from her. And she was the genuine homemaker from the 50s. And um, so we went out to the U-Pick farms and we picked our own veggies and our fruits. And she did canning. And I learned all the family recipes from her. So um, when I got in my 20s, I had my own two daughters. And um, I, I basically had to do like a, a balanced meal. But we're talking about back in the 70s when the soil was better and the fruits and vegetables had some a little more value. Um, than they do today. Were you aware of that? Were you aware, aware of that uh, back then or were you just eating what came out of the ground? I'm just eating what came out of the ground. Whatever crops were rotating near our house because we were um, down off of, in Cutler Ridge, which is now Cutler Bay. So there were a lot of places that we could go and just depending on what was planted, we would go in and get our, our buckets and pick and then take it home and my mom would can them. Got it. So then when you were... Um, as you grew up, grew older, as you started to, to move into the adulthood and um, were you also conscious of n nutrition? Um, I'm kind of looking for what was the road to ER shred? What, where, where does this, this um, come into your mind? Well, I now in my um, late teens, uh, almost 20 years old, I had my first child and I gained 55 pounds. And up until that time, I had weighed 110 and was completely lean and muscular. And, um, you know, I, I had never been heavy. In fact, my mother told my father that my nose was fat. That's how much weight I had gained. <laughs> like, George, her nose is fat. So I remember that. Um, but I wasn't able to drop the weight off afterwards. So um, um, that was the first time that I had put on weight and it didn't come off. And I was in my early 20s. Um, I've, I've come and go from fitness, um, being fit and um, feeling healthy, um, but I've had some challenges along the way. What was that? What was it that you found to be challenging? I mean, I mean, I know um, I know having been married to a woman who gave birth to kids and had, <laughs> trouble, and had trouble with weight, but that's its own challenge. Well, I had I had issues with my blood pressure uh, toward the end of the pregnancy and toxemia. So. Um, they had me on bed rest and there were some serious medical issues. But after the fact, when I was trying to lose the weight, I became really con overly concerned, I guess, with trying to get the weight off. So my first addiction came from a prescription amphetamine. And I went to a doctor to lose weight and he gave me a prescription amphetamine. So that's where I started um, and realized that I had an addiction to that, that type of drug. So that's that. Therein lies my my up and down the path of my life, where I've come in and out of addiction. But um, I've had many years of sobriety, periods of sobriety, where I've gotten healthy. And in my thirties, after my second baby, I chose to do a high protein, low fat. That was the problem, um, but low carb, almost no carbs, um, like just basically very clean eating. But again, he gave me an appetite suppressant, which was considered an amphetamine. So um, um, what I did study nutrition at that time, and I learned a lot about foods and what they did for the body and a lot about supplements. And I've always been interested in um, biology. And um, so I went into the medical field for a time and, you know, and stayed healthy. I'm, um, I'm listening and I'm, but mm -hmm. I'm also, I'm also back about seven or eight sentences. Uh -oh. so I want to take, I want to take that in and I want, I want to ask you if it's okay. Yeah. If it's okay for you to tell us a little bit more, because you you hit a nerve with my ears when you said that you were given an amphetamine or um, a, a narcotic of some type, I think you said, and that was a place where there was an addiction initiated. Yes. Um, That's to, when I became- To the degree you're comfortable. On, yes, in fact, um, myself and a friend of mine, I worked three jobs and had an infant child. So I needed the energy and I needed to stay up. And so that was my solution too. But I found at some points of my life that I actually was gaining weight so I could go to the doctor so I could get a refill for the meds. Oh. So that's where the cycle started. But um, I, I came through that. Um, I've had, you know, I, I dissolved that marriage, uh, went out on my own into the medical field. And what I basically did um, was um, I've been in and out of medical treatment. I try not to take medications, but when I go to big pharma, that's when my body 
actually has a, a very serious reaction. And so um, when I came into the ER shred, I was fully inflamed from psych meds and um, so many very harsh, harsh side effects on the extremes, on the severe side that I listed them and sent them to the doctor. And I, I was released from those medications. So, um, you know, you get your first prescription mm -hmm. and you have it and um, maybe you can have your second one and then you're starting to self-sabotage so you can get the fifth one or the eighth <laughs> one, which, whatever. It's, it's bad. Uh, it's not good. I'd like to, I mean, it, to peel that back. And so um, family, uh, people who are around you, um, community, um, what, what happens as you're journeying deeper into that spiral that you now are sharing back with us well when that when that happened when i started when i was working to um a full-time job a swing shift job and a part-time job and then had the baby um the marriage was falling apart and so um i i lived in a very tiny town it, it didn't have a traffic light only two two four-way stops in the town and i was driving 20 miles a day and um, and working these jobs. And um, I ended up having a, um, a pretty serious where my body just froze up and my head went back. And I, I remember I was at my job and my head went back and I couldn't bring it back down. So that was a combination of exhaustion and taking those medications and not eating properly because you don't eat when you're trying to lose weight and then working really hard. So again, they gave me medications on the other side to make me calm down and sleep and, you know, so <laughs> I have a real problem with that kind of thing today. So did the, um, did the weight come off as the you were? The weight did come off and I yeah. kept it off for quite some time. And when I turned 29 rod, that was my most traumatic year because I was going to turn 30 and I still had 35 pounds of baby weight. But this time I went to full, fully uh, uh, wrapped around nutrition and losing weight and exercise. So I got some rollerblades. I was doing five days a week with Body Electric on um, KLRN. Um, and that was stretching and toning. And, you know, like with, with um, Richards, what's her name? Oh, I can't think of her name. Um, but she was just an amazing uh, former um, prima ballerina. And she wanted ladies in their in their 40s and 50s to be healthy. So I began eating um, salads and meats, like big chef salad, and I would drink protein drinks. But with my protein drinks, I had to chew papaya tablets in order to digest them. And so I was able to lose 35 pounds very quickly. And then I stayed clean and sober for quite some time. Congratulations. That's excellent. Thank you. <laughs> well, and um, so was all of this while you were away from Florida? That was when I was in Texas. Okay. Yeah. So I had my first child in South Carolina and then I moved out to Texas. And I'll tell you what, Texas is so big. You could drive all day and all night and still be in Texas. Yeah. So I, I was there for 35 years in two different cities. Um, but um, as I got clean and sober, I went back to church. I had a healthy relationship with my child was, you know, we were starting to mend our relationship. I stopped mm -hmm. drinking and, um, and I, I became active and that's when I formed my first business as a clown. Okay. Well, so first of all, congratulations on making it through that journey to Thank that, you. to that better place that you found. That's only to God's glory. It, ha it has to do with my faith. Awesome. My faith. You got to awesome. have faith in something and that's. And that's a big, that's a big, big win. I mean, that's a huge win. And, and you know, um, as I've watched uh, the interviews that Jesse's done, and by the way, um, Jesse is in between flights, but he sends his, um, somewhere here I saw it, he sent a message that said uh, something, uh, something nice uh, about us both. And uh, uh, so I know he's watching. Hi, Jesse. I hope hi, we're Jesse. doing you proud. But in any case, I want to go back and um, first of all, I wanted to congratulate you. Second of all, I wanted to uh, ask you about what, what 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 the aftershock of that was. I mean, you got your life back in order. Mm -hmm. Did friendships come back in order? Did I really, uh, I, I, well, honestly, I had I have very few 
girlfriends. Um, I mostly hung with the guys. I was a tomboy. So I had one very dear friend that lived next door. We worked out together, but she moved away. So I just started focusing on my clown business. And I was clowning like pretty much eight hours a day, seven days a week, doing show to show to show. So, so you were um, and you were more than 29. You were how old at the I clown business? I was 33 business? when I began my clown business. And it was just simply called Mimi the Clown in Houston, Texas. Okay, well, let's. We're going to talk about clown business. We're okay. first going to talk about Mimi All because right. when I first met you, I think Sean and Crystal were can, were talking with you on a call, and they and I kept hearing Mel. Yeah. So when <laughs> I met you, you were Mel, and then I saw posts from Melanie, and then I heard people talking to Mimi. So kind of like Jesse James Jamnick has multiple names. Now I've got um, Mimi, Mel, Melanie, the clown. Um, what do you prefer? And you said your father gave you Mimi? No, my brother gave me Mimi because he couldn't oh. say Melanie. He was two years old. So my mother named me Melanie after the character in Gone with the Wind. And um, because that movie came out in 56, I think. And I was born in 58. So she named me Melanie. But I was Mark was two years old. So he called me Mimi. And then when I, was, I started performing as a clown with my family, um, somewhere between age five and age eight, um, we just picked Mimi because my dad's name was Bobo. But um, I went to junior high and there was another Mimi and, I, and she was just like voluptuous and glamour girl. And here I was tomboy with a ball cap and short hair. So I was like, no, my name's Melanie. So I went, I went to Melanie in junior high. And most of my alumni friends know me as Melanie. Um, but Mimi the Clown is who I was for 12 years in Houston. And it's just, it, that's basically my standard name, Mimi. All right. So you, you would like, if you have a preference, you'd like to be known as Mimi. Probably Mimi, yeah. All but right. when I introduce myself, Rod, I say my name is Melanie. So, okay, excellent. Yeah. All right, so now let's talk about this clowning. Um, right. I, I imagine, you know, I, I, I first I imagine circus tents, then I imagine birthday parties. Uh, which is more right? Birthday parties. Birthday parties, corporate events. And um, and I taught clown school for about three years for Wharton County Junior College. But that was 12 years, about 12 years into my own business. So um, my show is patterned after my father's. It's a variety show. I played the ukulele and we do sing along. Then it's a juggling routine that's a comedy. A magic show where the kids get to help with the birthday child as the featured star. And then um, face painting if they want it. And at the end is balloon sculpture. And that's my specialty. So I, I, I competed one year in 1991 and took the second place in the state of Texas for balloon sculpture. Awesome. I'm a custom latex engineer. Rob. <laughs> that's great. And a jingle writer. <laughs> and a jingle writer. <laughs> that's terrific. So do you have any favorite uh, anecdotes, uh, memories that are shareable that you think we might get a, a, a grin out of? Well, one of the one of the most fun skits that I did with my daughter, Carolyn, was Banana Bandana. And we performed it at the hospital where... Um, where I basically um, used to work as a phlebotomist. So we were outdoors on, on the stage and the skit goes, I'm going to do a magic trick and the, and the little clown is behind me. And I say, first you get a bandana and you hold it up. Well, she pulls out a banana. And the whole trick is to, to, um, to, to fold the bandana and she folds this banana. She puts it in her pocket just like I do and she squishes it. And the audience is cracking up at her and I'm being all serious. I'm the straight face clown, but that's my favorite memory um, with her uh, performing on a big stage. And her first show was in front of 300 people. Wow. So, so it sounds like not only you have to be um, a clown, humorous, all of that, but you have to be a bit of a magician. Oh, I am a magician. Yeah. But it's clown magic. There's a lot of magic if you go into shop and if you tell them you're a clown, they won't show you certain tricks. Because it's not for clowns. I'll be darned. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, this has been fun. Uh oh. Oh, oh, no. I just knocked you over. Hold on. There I think you're clowning around. around. You're upside down. Oh, Thanks. there you go. I, I go upside down. Uh, I go upside down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you're funny. We saw something today that um, that is a little bit more about your current life, your life. Oh, yeah. We saw Sean posted just a really sweet um, video of you with um, the Sunny with Sunny. Uh, people, one of your one of your um, your wards that you were taking care of. Um, so, how did you get hooked up with horses? Well, I was riding with my sister, Tracy, who, by the way, is my my sponsor for Isogenics and gifted me with Isogenics products. And she's the one that invited me to the ER Shred page when it was Body Alive. So she said, hey, let's do this program. So Tracy and I were coming back and she mentioned that her daughter wanted to look into um, riding horses. And I said, oh, there's a place right by my house. So we pulled in. And I met the lady that I did a volunteer work for. And she said, sure, you can come volunteer anytime. So um, I wasn't really able, up to getting up and moving around at that time. I was laying in bed reading books all day long. Um, but after about three months, I did get up and get out. And I was able to walk about a mile, 1.2 miles over there. And I started learning how to do the mucking and the barn chores. So um, it was just dirty work, and I was able to just go in and, and do what I wanted and be with big animals. <laughs> Had you been with um, horses prior to that? No. not Well, I'd ridden a few, but it was just to get on and ride. No, right. no technical stuff. But I, I, I did get on Dylan a couple times, and truth be told, I wasn't comfortable up on top of the horse. I want to be on the ground with the horse. I want to be with the horse providing care. That's that's what's important to me. Well, you showed us how you can receive a horse hug today. Yeah, I know. They're so wonderful. They don't often hug people. So that's really cool. All right. So Tracy, uh, she gets the credit for introducing you to um, the core products of Isogenics back when that was the main thing was the main thing. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you tell us about your 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 story? Why don't you tell us your story, how you came into Isogenics, and then how you have adapted um, the change that okay. is part of ER Shred. And I'll just well, let you talk about that. As I, as I said, we'll see. Uh, the reason I went on to the psych meds um, for depression and, and so forth was basically because I never grieved properly for the loss of my husband. So um, when I came to Florida, I was very depressed. I already had had nine months of clean time and I was just so depressed and I couldn't figure out why I was so unhappy. So I checked myself into a hospital cause it just got that bad. And at that point I said, I opted for meds and said, okay, I'll take them. So for one year I took those medications and I went from 145 to 173 very quickly. And um, a fully inflamed, big round face, um, blotchy skin, um, I was shut down. I couldn't sit still. I didn't sleep at night. It was it was uh, pretty extreme with the side effects. And Tracy realized that if if she just helped me to, to get the first basic pack in my body and get me started, and that was after one year on the meds, that she would she she knew that that would help me. So, so were, she, were you were you thinking of yourself as overweight or under oh, energized fat. or I, what were in you? In my mind, I was fat and ugly and, and unhappy, just really unhappy. Um, and and I don't see other people that way, but I saw myself that way. Okay. So um, it just I I didn't go anywhere, or do anything. I could barely walk around the block because I was in pain. Everything hurt. So um, when, when, when I started with the shakes, I did lose about 30 pounds um, over the, from August of 2018 until December of 2019. I lost about 30 pounds, but I didn't do the cleanses very well. They were a challenge. Um, I was eating one meal a day fish and I still wasn't losing the weight. It just wasn't working because I was still on medication. So when I got, I did three interviews with professionals and communicated to them my side effects and how I felt and the fact that I just really felt like I didn't want to take the meds anymore. They released me from the, from any medications with, with a, with a letter saying, you know, she is released from medications. We no longer feel they're appropriate for her. So um, when that happened, I had quit Isogenics products because I was disillusioned. I had plateaued and was still really heavy and 
and just, you know, not doing well. So um, then Tracy said, then she br brings in the isogenesis and I was able to get up and walk more than a block. I truly went from walking one block in three months. I was walking five miles a day, seven days a week. And all of a sudden I had a little bit of energy back and wanted to do something with myself. Um, and so from there, Rod, it was like, hey, she, she had already added me to Body Alive, but I never went there. And she had told me about Sean, but I never tried to meet who he was by looking at posts. It just didn't interest me, the isogenic stuff online. But when we talked about this new program and she said, hey, this is going to be fun. You want to do this with me? I was like, sure. And that's how I um, actually got to know Sean. I saw some of his lives regarding ER Shred and the rest is a very pleasant and in, invigorating. It's just everything changed for me. So when you, you um, began with your ISA journey, you said 2018-ish, 1918, 19. August 2018. You, then you stopped after a period of time and then you were um, brought back with an introduction of the product uh, Isogenesis. Mm -hmm. But I meant to know um, when, you, when you rediscovered um, or when you discovered uh, some of Sean's um, videos and uh, messages, um, what was the con condition that you were in at that point? Would you say at you were that point, like, like, it? I was walking, but I was still very unhappy and shut down. I, I, I was reading books, but not doing much of anything else. I did a little bit of cooking in the kitchen. Um, I moved up to Pompano Beach, and and so I did get a little bit active, but still, I didn't. I didn't have any desire to do anything different than what I was doing. And I was still, again, I wasn't dropping weight. I was feeling healthier and more active. So I probably dropped another 10 or 15 pounds, but um, it, I plateaued and then I plateau again and I plateau again. And it was long plateaus with little drops. So I was like, oh man, this is really, this is, I don't know about this anymore. So, um, the ER Shred program got introduced and Tracy started actually um, bringing a little gentle courtship to, from between me and Isogenics again, you know, and she, she's like, let's do this. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. You know, she tried to get me excited, but boy, did I get excited with ER Shred. So you, um, you said you were, you were not very well energized. You no. were um, uh, overweight. Mm. or bloated uh yeah. you showed me you showed me some pictures um yeah. that we can't share online here tonight but you can share them in your posts um so physically you didn't think you looked good you didn't feel good you felt overweight you were worn out and somebody says well just go eat meat <laughs> eat meat and cleanse yeah. Um, that what did what was going on in in here when you were hearing that message? Well, the first thing that Tracy and I said to each other is, "Boy, I'm gonna miss my squash. <laughs> I'm really gonna miss my squash. <laughs> That's our favorite veggie." <laughs> and my mom had just made steamed squash. And guess what? I found out, Rod, squash is the biggest culprit for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, really? I can't eat it. I don't eat it anymore. <laughs> That's so funny to me right now. So, yeah, I mean, we really thought, I mean, I was like, Tracy, do you think I should order greens? What are we going to do? We, we got to have something. How, how do we just eat meat? I mean, you know, question after question, but this can't be right. This just can't be right. And um, so when I went in with the program and we did October 3rd, I went all in. And, and did you like, say, okay. would you say you did that based on other people's evidence or on your shirt, faith? On faith? And on knowing that my sister is rarely wrong when she's convicted about something. And she said, I know Sean. Sean knows what he's talking about. Let's do this. Okay. Like, okay. All right. So you, you uh, decided to dive in. <laughs> Only 11 days. That was my mantra too. Just 11 days. We'll find out what's wrong with this. And uh, so far I haven't. Um, but... Um, but you start out, you have your shake days with a shake and steak. Um, when did you notice that something might be working? 
Well, now, five days before October 3rd, I all I had was Isoline, not Isoline Pro. I started incubating. I, t I started devouring the videos, the science, the labs, all that. I started reading and listening and, and working it up. So I started incubating my shakes five days before the first shred. So I already knew that, uh, that they were better tasting and I was staying full longer and I was able to work the horses because I did four hours in the morning, four hours at night. So I was like, oh, this is cool. So when it came to the first two cleanse days of the first shred, that's when I realized on day one of the, of the first two days of cleanse, on the first day, I realized, oh my gosh, I can do this. Because I had my bone broth in an eight ounce bottle. I had two bone broths mixed up in an eight ounce water bottle. And I had my wafers. And I had my shake, uh, my, uh, my cleanse all mixed up. And I would take two with me, drink one before I left. And I didn't get hungry. And not only that, I was starting to flow through all of the dietary and the work of eight horses, Rod. I used to have to stop and say, who gets turned out today again? You know, who, which ones go out to the paddocks? And she would tell me, like multiple times, she'd be like, today is Wednesday. It's Gypsy and Dylan and Ziggy. Oh, okay, thank you. I just wanted to be sure. And I stopped having to ask when, who, go, who does what and who goes where. And then um, one of this on, on my fourth day, at the end of my fourth day, um, I was asked to shovel sand out of one of the stalls, and it was a 15 by 25, and it was like this this thick. It was at least by four to six inches of wet sand, and I took a shovel and moved it all that day. That afternoon, wow. on my cleansing, because I had energy all of a sudden. I was like, wow, I had to make myself stop and drink the cleanse and then make myself stop and drink the bone broth. And I drink everything cold. I just shoot it, get it in and be done and then go back to what I'm doing. So um, it's the first time I cleansed and didn't hate it. And, and it's the first time I didn't cheat because I used to count carbs. I'd be like, how many goldfish? 20 goldfish is 19 carbs. Can I eat five goldfish? <laughs> and I would cheat every time. And this, I didn't have to cheat. I don't want to. So by day five, I literally came alive. I was boundless energy and so bright and happy. It was amazing. Wow, that's that is that's and you were, and you noticed it right during your first cleanse. And so so you started to tell a little bit about it. It was the first time you did it without hating it. Um, I, I'm kind of like you. I was I was a cleanser because I was I had to. Yeah. And yeah. not because I wanted to. No. Uh, so what was what was it that you think made it easier and not hating it um, this time? Well, it might partly be, be because I wasn't at home all day long. I was doing four hours of horses in the morning, four hours in the afternoon. And in between, I would lay down and rest, you know, get my boots off and, and put my, my head down and my feet up. So I was busy, busy. But it was the fact that I wasn't churning. My stomach wasn't churning. I wasn't, I wasn't drinking the cleanser and being like, oh, more water. I had a 50-ounce bottle of water that I carried with me. And I would kill that 50 ounces in my first five hours of the day, of the work day, you know, finish it and refill it and go back. So um, I just felt like um, when, when I was able to, to successfully do two days in a row the first time, that's when I knew that something magical was going on with me. Because I never had the desire or I never had the um, self-control. This time I wanted to not eat. I wanted, and I didn't have the hunger. I was actually, I realized everything that was going on on those two days was for a specific purpose. So, um, for that reason, I, I I just stuck with it because I and and that's on my day five is when my graph on my isogenics isobody challenge it dips. I mean plateau 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 three months and then bam, and then a leveling out and bam again on day eleven on ten and eleven days when you do the second cleanse bam dropped again. It's amazing when I look back at that graph. Gotta love the bam. It. Gotta love the bam, right? Bam. <laughs> Yeah, that is, that's, it is, especially, it is, especially yeah. if you're somebody who tracks what's going on in your, in your body and your weight and uh, inches and you like to see those noticeable mo movements and that's awesome. The, um, uh, did you have any trouble, um, 
in the evening? So I mean, you're talking about goldfish counting, but how about in the evening? Did you, um, were you tempted to snack after your evening's shake or your, do you have your meal, main meal in the middle of the day? My main meal is in the middle of the day. I, I only a few times um, since October have I had a meal in the evening. <clears throat> um, I prefer my shakes in the evening. So what I do is incubate in the morning before I go to work. And then I put it in the fridge and 12 hours later, I'm drinking it. And it's, um, I find that for me, I don't want my body to be digesting the meat and stuff while I'm asleep. It's, it's just better. I like it better. Yeah. It's more comfortable for me. And what are you missing besides the squash? Yeah. What am I missing or what am I no longer eating? <laughs> well, what are you, I mean, let's go with both. I mean, I know what you're not eating, but let's, let's talk about what are you missing? Are you feeling like you're deprived? Oh, not at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, this time I just finished my ninth protocol shred and um, I'm just steak and shake right now. I have no desire to go in and try to add anything. It's just, I'm just making, I'm having fun with, um, with what I'm eating. I made a, a seafood frittata today. I don't, I don't feel the desire to go pick up green beans or it's just not there for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. I know some people want to feel like they're eating healthy, and so they try organic this and organic that. But I've tried a few, and um, I, I I gravitate more towards onions, mushrooms, and seasonings for meats. I check those out first, and then avocado, everyday avocados. And I did I do as a as a treat. I will have some mango, and I'll throw it in. I um, I used to have leftover plant based shakes. And I would make that for dessert with frozen mango. And and definitely, I mean, it was sweet, but it would be like a sorbet. It's kind of a, so, but not, I don't, I don't need it. So um, I think you might hold some kind of a record for the number of uh, shreds you've done. I mean, when everybody reports in occasionally, I, I hear people say five or seven, and then you've got like 11 or. <laughs> Did I tell you, you I have an addictive personality? <laughs> Are you are you um, doing your your eleven days back to back? Or are you? Uh, no, are you... Well, I was doing them with the group, so so I was staying consistent with the group since October third, um, and then three lovely ladies from Maryland signed on, and so I did an independent group shred with them on Messenger. So it was a little bit off of the dates, right. but my second two days cleanse matched this past shreds first two days cleanse. So I'm still in the conversation, but um, I, I I like the fact that when I do try veggies and fruits, when I add stuff in, I always, almost always find a culprit. And I have to cleanse again and do full protocol to get my baseline back. Yeah. So this time, I like last week, I had some fresh bok choy from a friend's garden, and it, I just said, no, nah, I don't want it. So I, I gave it away. Um I, I, three weeks before that, I tried um, some dandelion greens and they did okay, but it just didn't throw me. So I'll stick That's with great. my garlic and onion. So do you feel like you're in um, maintenance? Uh, are you, in terms of your desired weight uh, or your energy? Or do you feel like you're good? This is a lifestyle at this point? This is this is my lifestyle. And occasionally I have something I know is okay for me. So um now I'll tell you one thing I did try because I latched on to the information of don't add your starches with your proteins. You know, don't create a, a bad situation with a, a sweet fat. So I got some organic um, Japanese yams. Mm. Um, they're, they're not purple, they're white on the inside and they're high in magnesium and I got them from Whole Foods. So I bought five and they've been sitting in there and I tried one a couple of weeks ago. And it was very tasty. It was like a sweet potato. And I, I put with garlic and sea salt and fried it in butter after microwaving it. And I did okay with that. But again, Sean has said, if you're going to have a potato, or maybe Jesse said it, have it separate. Have it, you know, have it separate. Don't combine it with your meats. You need to have your meat meals as meat meals. It's just a lifestyle because it's it's what I know works for me. So, yeah. so are you, um, are you, um, using any other supplements or any other uh, any other things in terms of um I'm back on my isogenesis. I take my isogenesis now again and I'm back on my minerals. Um, so I take isogenesis and minerals and then I drink my shake. Um, but when it's protocol it's protocol. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I and I got my collagen elixir, but um, I'm starting to wonder. You know, I'll do I'll do the thirty days that I bought, but I I don't know that. I probably should just look like I'm sixty three, don't you think? I do, I do, <laughs> I, I definitely. Uh, but that that's going to be quite a while because you don't look it today. <laughs> I just pinch my cheeks and get that rosy look. Oh, I get that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey, you know, um, we've got just uh, a good maybe 12, 13 minutes left. Okay. And um, and we've talked about a lot of things. I'd like to uh, give you the opportunity because one of the things I heard was um, about how you how you have come to love yourself. And I think it's an important message for the people who are listening to um, compare and contrast what it feels like when your self-worth is low and it causes some of these, these destructive behaviors that can, can lead into damaging places and worrisome places. And then what it's like when you come out of that. And, and so uh, if you'd like to share um, with us a little bit about what the, the lows of, of not being in self-love felt like and what the transformation has been like um, with both your body, your mind, your nutrition, with the whole thing that comes out to, that talks about that self-worth. Um, okay, so I don't know where low self-esteem came from, except that maybe um, I set my expectations to um, exceed what my parents hoped for me. Like, you know, my parents were happy with the things that I did, being an athlete and all of that, but I always thought I could do better. So I don't know where that came from, um, whether they dropped me on my head from up high. I, you know, I don't know. Um, I think I've always seen the underdog. I always, when I was clowning, I always see the one kid that can't sit still. I understand that. The teacher yelling at that one kid. I see the elderly, the little old lady who's put on fresh lipstick and her favorite pearls to go to the grocery store and, and the prettiest blouse that she thinks makes her look nice. And I talk to those people. Um, those are the people that are my heart. And so mm -hmm. I think it's important for me to, to be consistent with showing myself that type of, um, um, like, what, like, I don't judge people, but I judge myself. I've always felt like I've failed at so many things. And so I've, I've, I've begun now to, to stop um, with punishing myself. I have to direct my thoughts to other things. Um, I listen to K-Love radio and there's a lot of scripture that comes through there. And I do, honestly, I spend my mornings, it's hard to believe, but I'm so quiet in the morning. When I go into the barn, I'm very quiet. I wake up quiet. And when I sleep at night, I sleep with crickets and frogs from South Carolina. But I think what's important for the people who don't feel, who are looking to ER shred to fix something, you probably want to think about what is inside me that I've never really liked and then begin to find the things about you that are genuinely um, um, honorable. Like, like, who are you really? I, I think I've always championed other people. So it's time for me to champion myself. Um, and not in an egotistical way, but it's time for me. Um, and it has been for the past, since October, I've really had a little bit of um, introspective about who I really am. And the fact that most of the punishment um, that, uh, that I feel about myself is, is self-inflicted. So why, why am I able to love and, and care and nurture other people when I haven't done that for myself? So that's what I've learned. And that's my journey right now. Um, being open and honest about my past is one thing. I think maybe, um, you know, sometimes I talk in circles so that I'm learning how not to talk <laughs> so much. Um, but um, I, I do have a um, philosophical mind. And I like to think back to the things I've done and then realize that I'm just like everybody else who I want to help out. So there's no reason that I can't help myself out. You know, 
Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I know that uh, one of the reasons I think we connected um, early on, aside from conversations around meat shakes and cleansing, <laughs> was um, that I know you have a special place in your life each day for uh, considering gratitude, as do I. Absolutely. And, um, and we found that in common. And uh, I think that is a great launching pad for self-worth and self-awareness and being, um, being grateful even when things aren't perfect because right. we're breathing. We're breathing. We get to do it another day. And I, I think that's part of your philosophy, the way I see you living. Yeah. And, and um, thank you for that. But um, didn't you um, share a page, a group page? Yeah. yeah I love that page. So um, I remember that. And I remember seeing, and there was something about you. So I don't know what we have in common, but I like your grandpa project. <laughs> um, I like the fact that you just decided, you know what, I'm going to do this for me and for my grandson and my grandchildren. So it's it's just nice now that I'm doing something that makes a difference in my life for me so that if I'm a better person, I can actually be better for somebody else and help help more people. Absolutely. So um well I, we are yeah. we are so grateful that you are who you are without the makeup behind coming out from behind the mask. No clowning around right now. Um the comments that you'll get to see are full of love for oh, me. Oh, really? How sweet. And I absolutely. Seen and um, it's just been so enjoyable to have this chat with you. Um, I, I, I'm sure that there's so many things that I didn't ask about, but I want to I want to um, give you a chance for a final thought. That's what people are here for. They're here to hear okay. from you. What would you like people to take away that maybe we haven't talked about or maybe you want to say a little more about? Um, in reference to where I'm at today and where I was before ER Shred, there is um, valid validity to this program. It is going to be an upgrade to your health. But for me, it was a human experience. And that just came to me on somewhere in my first 11 days, probably day eight or day nine. My, my, all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is so complete for me. Everything seems to be lightening up and changing and improving. It was my emotional state. It was my mental clarity. It was my psychological health it got better. I started feeling more positive. My confidence came back. Um, my energy was there. I didn't feel old. I didn't, I didn't feel ugly because I felt bright inside. It wasn't ugly physical, but on the inside, I just felt really like yucky. And so when I, when I, I took pictures of myself in the 11 days, but I stayed in the program because I knew there were more things that were, that, that I could benefit from by getting a cleaner baseline. If you're looking strictly for numbers, um, pounds lost and inches, um, it, it, you're in the wrong place. You've got to see, and I knew I had seen what was a complete human experience. It was, it was physical, mental, psychological, emotional, and spiritual. Everything came together and continues to get better. I learned something about my body with every shred that I do. Every shred that I do. So opt in. Stay in, find where your strengths are within the community, and then share that. Everybody has value. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being our thank guest you, tonight and um, for allowing me to sit in for Jesse and have this conversation with you. I feel like I'm the one who's most privileged for getting Aww. to have this conversation. Um, I just want to remind everybody who's on the call and to tell your friends that uh, there'll be another call tomorrow night when um, I think it's Sean and Crystal hosting uh, tomorrow night, um, a call of people with with good news about what they have experienced over the last shred that they completed or the last several shreds. Uh, we'll hear from Jesse, I believe, uh, tomorrow night again. And then, of course, on Thursday, um, for the people who want a little more depth on what else there is behind the ER shred and the opportunity, uh, Bob Sivright is going to be hosting a call. So 
three calls a week. It's so fun to hear from everybody. I love this part of what we're doing. Again, thank you for being with us tonight. And thank you so much, Rod. And I'll tell you, on the Wednesday night call, I giggle almost all the way through. People share their stories and what's going on with them. And it just cracks me up. I giggle all over inside because I remember my first shred. I remember how much better I felt. And it just makes me gleeful. I'm just giggling. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I, yeah. just, I just love what I'm eating and how I feel and the changes that I'm experiencing. Yeah. So uh, I think we all have that great feeling going on. And um, for the people who are brand new, it's coming to your, to your house too. I mean, <laughs> it, it, day five, day, wait, seven, day nine, it will be there for you. So hang in there. Uh, I think I'm going to say good night and good night. this will end our broadcast. Take care, Thank everybody. You,